Hi there. So I'm going through this Drake T4XB a little more. And one thing you might need that my friend Brenda has advised me to get was a scope. So I did find this Tektronix scope <coughs> on Craigslist for a very fair deal of $50. And just think that back when this radio was made in the 1960s, early, well, early 70s, late 60s, this scope wasn't even invented yet. So this has been a real godsend in debugging the RF stages of this uh, of this radio. So anyway, let me show you what I've been doing here. So yeah, you, you really want to get a scope to go through the stages of the radio because otherwise you're just kind of uh, hinting in the dark. And, and now that scopes are I mean, these scopes, I think this is from the late 80s or 90s. It's These are pretty much just tossed out because you can buy these Chinese scopes now for 300 bucks. They're very small. Anyway, this is an analog scope, and it fit the bill for me. And I like how it has a digital readout on the analog little CRT tube. It's pretty cool. Anyway, so I'm going through the stages of this uh, radio, and let me show you what I found so far. And my desk is a mess here, as you can see. Got the radio up on the screen here on the computer, and I've been looking at the schematic here. And I've been going through it sort of piece by piece at lunch here, taking the lunch off and just doing some work. So let's see here. The actual schematic is here. So I'm starting at all the oscillators, and here's the one that does AM and SSB, and I verified that this crystal's working, that carrier balance works. I'm pretty much attached to this transformer right about here and getting a pretty good signal. So that's working to that point. I'm not sure if I'm going through the filter yet, but to there works fine. And I can see it's got a pretty good signal here. Um, it looks like it's getting about, that's a 0.1 volt scale. So let's get it down to a volt here. Okay, there's a half a volt. So it's a half a volt signal, half a volt of RF there, which it's showing uh, 2 megahertz. It's actually probably supposed to be a 5.4 IF. Okay, so that's cool. And I can diddle with um, this can here. Like I can diddle with um, these transformers here and, and vary the signal for peak. So that's it's really important to be upstream so you aren't really... Uh, varying the impedance a whole lot. So I'm right here on T2, so I'm not sure how much I'm varying, how much my impedance of my scope is affecting T2 here, but I can definitely peak um, T14, and and I'll show you that now. So I can reach down here and find T14, and you can see how easy the scope is to uh, change it and peak it for max on T14, so that's really nice. And the same thing with the uh, the transformer here, which is um, which is T2. So I'm going off this 12BA6 amplifier, IF amp now, and I'm mucking around with T2. So there's T2 right there. So I can put a screwdriver on there. And this one was pretty much on because I hadn't diddled with it. And sure enough, I can peek this one. So you can see how great a scope is for analyzing this stuff. So that's the IF oscillator and the SSB AM type stuff. These crystals here also I found are really clean. So let's look at those. The crystals you can take off on those. You look for coax coming out of these assemblies and this one has coax actually leading over to this band switch here so I can show you that coax you can see it way down. there it is right there you see the coax with the little braid that looks kind of clear that's the coax for this connection for that vfo the vfo is kind of a stinker so it doesn't look like it's working very well let me show you the vfo here it's got a really bad waveform on it i gotta get the scope connected i'm getting a bit of a spark when i connect this thing which isn't good a little tiny, see a little spark there? That's not a good sign. That's a sign that either the scope has leakage to the ground or the 
ham radio does, the uh, Drake. It's probably the Drake. Okay, let's, anyway, let's go to that, uh, that wire down in there. Let me hook the scope down in there. We'll look at the VFO PTO output, which is very low and kind of gaggy looking. So here we go. So I'm thinking this PTO is, is shot. It's working, but barely. So let me increase the voltage here. You can see the waveform is, is kind of a stinker here. So we can just try and trigger on it. The waveform's all screwy, so I'm betting that the PTO is working barely, and there's probably an amplifier transistor in there that's shot or something, so I gotta take the PTO out and fix it. I think it's not working right. And I'm only getting a 20 millivolts here, so that's probably not enough for the premixer. Anyway, yeah, that's the PTO. I gotta definitely take that apart sometime. Look after it. So let me get this lead off of here, and now we're gonna go to the crystal oscillator. So here's a crystal oscillator for all the bands, and this thing works like a champ. So let me show you the uh, output coax on this thing, which is right there. Okay, see it? See that little white braid there in the coax? That's where you get signal off this thing. So let's connect to it. All right, come on there. And this thing is probably pinned over here, the scope. Let's decrease the voltage here, or increase it, let's see. Click, 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 yeah. So this thing puts out a nice clean signal here. So the only dirty signal we have is from the little PTO. So I think the PTO needs rebuilt. It's, it's shot probably. But everything else appears to be working. So I think it's the PTO is the misfit here so far. Let's show you the band switch. So the band switch will switch in these crystals. So through this transmission type thing here with a 90 degree gear, it'll move this flavor switch here and switch in these crystals for each band, which is pretty groovy. So watch how it works. Right now I'm on the lowest band and as I increase the, the bands from 3.5 to 7, you'll see the frequency increases of the crystal because there's more waves per inch. And so now I'm on the uh, 20 meter band. There's 15 and there's 10. So 10, 15, 20, um, 40, 80, and then 160 has no crystal, so it's blank. So anyway, that's a good fast way to verify your uh, Drake crystals for the band change are working. And these are common to most Drake products of the late 60s, where it has the uh, Crystals for each band. I think the the uh, R4 receiver has this stuff in it, as does the transmitters. So that was pretty smart of Drake to make this work that way. So it verifies the switches are working and the crystals are fine. So I think my my guilty party here is going to be this this PTO. So I'm going to take this thing apart. This is going to be not so fun. Probably going to try some new transistors in there and see if that'll fix it. So. That's about it for my progress on this radio. I want to thank the gentleman in uh, Berkeley who sold me the scope for 50 bucks. It, it's a big scope. It's really too big <laughs> for my workbench. Look how big this thing is. I mean, I use this table for my uh, for my real job work, and, and so I'm, and at lunch here I'm playing with this radio, and uh, it takes up a lot of room. Okay, well, thanks for watching. That's the progress on the uh, drink uh, tea. 4XB. It looks like the Gilly Party is indeed the little PTO right here. It's not putting out enough stooch. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.